think that in the security space, one of the biggest challenges people have at the moment is the signal to noise ratio of what's actionable and what's not actionable yeah. um, leads to something that most people commonly call alert fatigue. You know, you're sitting in a console with you know 14,000 red alerts that that something's bad. Um, and the, the counter to that is to try to lock everything down, which in and of itself is a huge monu monumental effort for, for, for uh, customers. So I think to your point, um, we don't need to be completely black or white on either side. We don't need to lock everything down completely. We don't need to have it open completely. There needs to be something somewhere in between. And I think to your point, uh, taking a look at what people need access to in kind of a monitoring mode and looking at you know, deviations of behavior that might indicate something's abnormal can be an effective way. One of the biggest risks we have, I think, today with breaches is that we simply don't know that people are in the environment. In many cases, a breach occurs and it's weeks, months, or years before that breach is discovered. And we can do much better, um, um, again, with least privilege, right. uh, as well as some monitoring tools to help us identify patterns of abnormal behavior. Uh, and I know that you're doing a lot of work on that in the data center side of the house. Yeah, I think, uh, so it's, uh, you raise a bunch of good points. So the notion that least privilege around an application or a service or data shrinks the attack surface. Yeah. Doesn't eliminate, there's no silver bullets in Correct. security, but it shrinks the attack surface. Uh, that stops some level of attack, but it also means, as you point out, the signal to noise ratio, things that things that are um, uh, malicious or whatever, they jump out more. They're less right. uh, needle in a haystack, they're more a needle in a few you know pieces of hay. Now right. it's suddenly easier to read. And, and in the other point I think you were making, which is great, which is that it's also more actionable, that I actually have some sense of, is this something I should care about now? And what are my options to do about it, right? right? And I think um, what is uh, exciting, I think, about looking at things like the cloud and virtualization and things like you know, the, sort of the AirWatch platform and some of the things that the areas that you're working on, this is a new piece of infrastructure we've never really had before that allows us to get rid of some of those problems. Uh, you know, in, with the virtualization layer, we now have new visibility to understand how things were provisioned there in the first place and what's there now. We have the ability to set up boundaries that move. Sure. You know, uh, the machines move, it moves with it. If it moves to the cloud, it moves with it. Uh, if uh, it expands, it expands with it. So now you have this logical boundary that all you have to worry about is you know, you have things that help you define that boundary, and then once it's defined, it, it sort of maintains itself. Uh, there are so many advances like this that we're starting to get rid of the excuses to trying to solve the least privilege. And in my mind, I, you know, without trying to address, take advantage of that, it's the biggest shame because yeah. uh, 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 this is what's going to suddenly make the problem addressable, to get ahead of the curve. I, I don't see another way of, of doing it. You know, identity wasn't a big, uh, focus point for organizations in the past, but as data and applications move outside the data center and are straddling both of those inside the data center and outside the data center, the user's identity is the only thing that ties that together, right. as well as this unified platform of management that goes across all devices, you know, data center and endpoint. And then I think the other point that you brought up that I want to touch on as well, you talked a bit about the rapid changes that are occurring in the industry in terms of how applications are developed, kind of the DevOps movement. And I think what's really important about that is DevOps is, is bringing a fundamental shift in how applications are constructed in a very distributed fashion, but it's also bringing about a massive change in, in the speed in which changes are being made to the core infrastructure of the application. And what's key about that is I think IT hasn't gone through that kind of ops, you know, as a service mentality. Mm. They're still kind of stuck in many ways in provisioning things the way they did in the past. And the, the DevOps movement is beginning to force IT to rethink how their security controls get applied in a classic sense, and to your point, make it more dynamic, allow it to follow the pieces of an application throughout an environment, whether that's a, a virtual machine, whether it's a container, whether it goes to the cloud or between multiple clouds, we have to be more agile in how we apply our security principles, and I think that transformation for IT is, is rapidly underway. As much as people first blush is that creates new challenges. Yes. Um, it, it also creates a lot of new opportunities to align the security team with the application team and suddenly things are much more declarative yes. about what their purpose is. So in the data center side, um, as you know, a lot of the work that's been going on, the initial work was, again, in this principle of least privilege um, to enable us to create logical boundaries around applications in the data center and to be able to enforce those with firewalling and, and uh, isolated sort of network, L2, L3, 
and be able to align controls to that. And that's the work that's been going on with NSX and microsegmentation. And there's more work happening. We're adding encryption to be able to encrypt that microsegment to protect it against, you know, the uh, physical underlay, as an example. The, the places uh, we've talked a lot about where we're going next is moving into detect and respond. To take yes. the same principle of least privilege, but, but using our position to be able to see what the application team intended with their application, using their provisioning systems, using their data that they are serving these systems up, and to use that to compare against what's actually running to be able to say, I'll know the moment someone, that application or any component of that application is behaving differently than intended. Mm -hmm.